We can identify the Mabinogi tale, Branwen, daughter of Llyr, as the Welsh creation myth, and the seemingly psychopathic figure, Efnisian, as the primordial form of the Welsh Rudra, and thus his brother, Nisian, as the primordial Welsh Shiva. The decoding of the Welsh creation myth, however, relies on the proper understanding of the Vedic creation myth, something that is rare to find. In the Rig Vedic creation myth, not the Nasadiya Sukta, usually referred to as the creation hymn, but rather the version found in Rig Veda 10.161, Father Sky is portrayed raping his own daughter, as if in a primordial union with her. An archer who is invoked with a Rudrian formulation, a Raudra Brahman, and is in fact Rudra Agni, according to scholar Stella Cromrish, divides the sexual union of Father Sky and his female other half using an arrow shot. The semen of Father Sky spills down and creates the site of the primordial sacrifice, and also spawns the ancestors of human beings. This is told cryptically in Rig Veda 10.161 and Rig Veda 1.71 verse 5. And due to its cryptic presentation, most people don't even know this myth. But scholars such as Arthur Anthony MacDonald, Stella Cromrish, Stephanie Jameson and Joel Brereton, and others have brought clarity to these Vedic passages and the Brahmanas that elaborate the narrative. In summary, Rudra Agni violently divides Father Sky from progenitive union with his daughter, quote unquote, who is really his other half, leading to the creation of the ancestors of humans and the site of the primordial sacrifice. The identity of this daughter is debated among scholars, but MacDonald identifies her with the earth goddess, which the comparative evidence from other branches also seems to confirm. Returning to the Welsh myth, when we are able to identify Ephnician as Rudra, we can see that this same mythic structure forms the very backbone of the second branch of the Mabinogi, Branwen, daughter of Llyr, and thus this tale is the Welsh creation myth, and is a very detailed version of the Indo-European creation myth at that. Therefore, to show that Ephnician is Rudra, we can point to virtually anything he does, so thoroughly do his actions accord with the traits and myths of Rudra on the primordial scene of creation. His name, Ephnician, means hostile or wrathful. He is called the bringer of strife, while Nisian, his brother, is the bringer of peace. The text reads, And one of these youths was a good youth, and of gentle nature, and would make peace between his kindred and cause his family to be friends when their wrath was at its highest. And this one was Nisian, but the other, Ephnisian, would cause strife between his two brothers when they were most at peace. These brothers are explicitly contrasted in their names and in their descriptions, presenting the same duality with which Rudra and Shiva are contrasted. The scholar Patrick Ford even explains the implicit contrast of the names of Nisian and Ephnisian as Mr. Peace, Nisian, and Mr. Unpeace, Ephnisian. Ephnisian mutilates horses, while Rudra and his band of Rudras are well known for mutilating various kinds of livestock. In the Vedic creation hymn previously mentioned, a form of Rudra is Vashtospati, and he is given form by the other gods when Father Sky rapes his daughter, Vashtospati, meaning the protector of the house. Similarly, Ephnician defends the special house built by Mytholach as a trap for Bran by violently cleansing it and crushing the skulls of all 200 assassins placed there to kill them, acting as a sort of protector or cleanser of the house. As Cramrish explains, Rudra is the defender of the integrity of the heavenly state before the moment of creation. He does not want the sacred liquid to be spilled into creation via the sexual act of Father Sky. 
as this sacred liquid is of the essence of the uncreated realm, and this would break the pre-cosmic wholeness and begin the unfolding of worldly generation. As the policeman of cosmic order within this pre-cosmic state, he also is responsible for putting a stop to both the sexual violence, which is against order, and the procreative act that Father Sky is the agent of that will bring about worldly generation. When this is understood, Ephnician's cryptic hostility to Methalach, who is Father Sky, and Branwen's marriage, and his anger at them being given the cauldron, the container of sacred liquid, finally becomes comprehensible. Their marital union will result in the spilling of the sacred liquid that will have a domino effect leading to the bursting of the other world into creation. Rudra tries to stop this creation from happening because it is a chaotic development compared to the perfect wholeness of the pre-cosmic divine world. It is against cosmic order and equilibrium, but when the progenitive act does happen, he tries to then impose a new order onto the world that has been set in motion, to rectify its chaotic aspects and bring it back in line with the divine. Ephnician's actions cannot be understood without reading them along these very lines, including the throwing of the son of Metholach and Branwen into the fire, a very sudden and confusing act by Ephnician, but which is a perfect match for when, due to the arrow of Rudra Agni striking him, the seed of the Vedic Father Sky falls to the ground and is there engulfed in flames, marking the site of sacrifice. Thus the offspring of the Welsh Father Sky, Mathalach, being thrown down into the flames by Ephnician, is the same as the seed of the Vedic Father Sky falling to the earth and being engulfed in flames there when Father Sky is shot by Rudra Agni. The child of Mathalach is in the same position as the seed of Vedic Father Sky, both being forms of the offspring of Father Sky. Finally, Ephnician self-sacrifices in the cauldron of regeneration to help his side win the war. When he enters the cauldron, he makes his own heart burst with his effort to destroy it. At the same point in Rudra's myth, Rudra goes into the waters in meditation and castrates himself there. What the bursting of one's own heart and the castrating of oneself have in common is that they are both symbols of the sight of the passions being snuffed out and overcome. The heart and the phallus are equally symbols of the sight of the worldly passions, and the Welsh tradition has merely chosen to speak of the bursting of the heart rather than of castration. The sacrifice of Evnissian should then be read as forming a bridge to the divine, as Rudra is the ferryman and liberator who leads to the other side, the yogi who meditates in the waters to gain samadhi, overcoming the worldly passions and leading to a transcendental state, the transcendent pillar or sthanu that he becomes. Of Rudra, who she calls the liberator, Kramrish says, the fierce guardian of the uncreate, at the inception of life on earth, having entered into the created world, is the ferryman who leads to the other shore. When he bursts his own heart, the sight of the passions, Ephnician, like Rudra, becomes the symbol of the attained state of integral wholeness, or samadhi, an example of this state of reintegrated wholeness to all thereafter. In the Vedic version, it is much more clear that Rudra's lost phallus is really symbolic of a maximizing of his spiritual virility, rather than a simple self-neutering and that while Rudra becomes an immovable transcendent pillar, he nonetheless has other manifestations on earth, whether called by the name Rudra or Pashupati or Vashtospati or something else. Rudra becoming the transcendent pillar or Sthanu is equivalent to the death of Ephnician when he stretches himself to full length in the waters of the cauldron and bursts his own heart. Ephnician would then transcend the other world just as Cronus, the Greek god in the same position, does in the same place in his myth, when after violently dividing the rape of Father Sky and Mother Earth, Cronus becomes castrated and then goes to be the ruler of the highest afterlife destination, the Blessed Isles. 
as such, we are able to be confident that Ephnician does similarly, even though it is not stated explicitly in the tale, which is being portrayed as a sort of medieval romance. After the war ends, some women pregnant with the ancestors of today's humans are found in a cave. Thus the war results in the generation of humans, just as the Vedic, Norse, and Greek creation myths do. Since Ephnician is therefore the Welsh Rudra in a primordial form, we see that the war that he causes and fights in is really the division of the abusive marriage of Father Sky and Mother Earth, Mafalach and Bronwyn, just as with the division of Sky and Earth by Cronus in the Greek tradition. This is again directly comparable to the violent sexual union of Father Sky and his female half or daughter in the Vedas, which Rudra Agni divides. Instead of a rape, in the Welsh version, the violence has been portrayed as physical abuse and the union as marriage. The rape of Father Sky's female half, his daughter, calls Rudra to stop it with his arrow. Likewise, the marital violence of Matholach against his spouse Branwen calls Ephnician and his brothers to put a stop to it with a war. This war and the arrow shot of Rudra are dramatizing the same core metaphysical event. The existence of the duality of Ephnician and his peace-bringing brother, Nician, shows that the Rudra-Shiva duality existed from Proto-Indo-European times. This peace-bringing brother, Ephnician, blatantly contrasted with him along these lines, indeed cannot be explained in any other way than as the Welsh Shiva. Thus, because the Welsh case has an explicit Rudra-Shiva pairing, it is possible to deduce that the Vedic Rudra also always implies his own Shiva face. Shiva is the other side of Rudra, always present as this concept must have been present during the Proto-Indo-European period in order to appear similarly in Vedic and Welsh, not to mention Norse traditions. Hence, when Rudra Agni divides Sky and his female aspect, this is always really Rudra Shiva Agni, a triple god doing so. The name Rudra simply encompasses the Rudra Shiva duality as such in Rig Vedic hymns. We have Rudra Shiva Agni as the main dividers of Father Sky and his female half. Likewise, in the Welsh version, we have Ephnician, or Rudra, accompanied by Nician, or Shiva, and Manawidan, or Agni, in his war against Matholach, or Father Sky, which results in the end of his marriage with Branwen, or Mother Earth, and the death of their son who is thrown in the fire. It is this trio, Rudra, Shiva, and Agni, that is usually present at the dividing of the primordial union of earth from sky, in the moment of primordial creation, as again with Odin, who is Rudra, Hynir, who is Shiva, and Lothar, who is Agni, when they divide Ymir, who is the unquiet union of sky and earth, or Djaus Prithvi. This is why it is specifically Ephnician, Nician, and Manawidan who greet the son of Matholak, named Gwern, meaning alder, like the tree. This scene being the direct parallel of when Odin, Hynir, and Lothar find the tree named human Asker, meaning ash, on the beach. I will restate one last time. Rudra Agni divides Sky from his own female half, but Rudra is always Rudra Shiva, as the Welsh and Norse trios are able to confirm. If the idea of Nician as a Welsh Shiva is rejected, then one has to explain why the Welsh Rudra, Ephnician, has a brother with nearly the same name, and why their two names are explicitly contrasting and mean roughly Mr. Peace and Mr. Unpeace. One has to explain who this Nician could possibly be besides a god sharing an Indo-European root with Shiva, the peaceful side of the wrathful destroyer god, Rudra. Now, clearly, Gwyn ap Neith is the Welsh Rudra, 
in most myth and folklore, perfectly cognate with Fionn Macul of the Gaelic tradition, as we have discussed in a previous video. But we can now understand the continuity between Efnisian and Gwyn. Gwyn is perhaps the better known name of the god, but when Efnisian dies, he of course goes to the other world and must remanifest as Gwyn ap Neve, just as Rudra becomes the transcendent pillar after castrating himself in the waters and remanifests in other Rudra forms or as Pashupati or Vashtospati, etc. We can know confidently that Efnisian remanifests as Gwyn because in the Gaelic tradition we have the figure named Ever Finn. In the position that Efnisian occupies in the Welsh creation myth. That is, Ever Finn and his brothers break up the marriage of Eriu, meaning Ireland, which then stands for Earth, and Eriu is Mother Earth, and her husband, Mac Grainne, who, as the primordial spouse of Eriu, whose marriage is ended violently by this Rudraic Eber Finn, is apparently Father Sky. Eber Finn is subsequently the one who shares rule of Ireland briefly, but is then killed, this being a variant that parallels the deposing of Cronus by Zeus or the death of Ephnician, which are all the same mythic event told slightly differently. The death or deposing of the primordial Rudra after creation, leading to his later remanifestation in another form. Clearly, Eber Finn then remanifests simply as Fionn or Finn Makul, and their names much more blatantly mark the continuity of these figures. Ever Finn becomes Finn. Ephnician, however, becomes Gwyn, and thus we can see that the name Ephnician, the hostile or wrathful one, is just an epithet, a primordial byname of the god known otherwise as Gwyn. Odin is called Odin when he divides earth and sky in the primordial moment, and is called either Odin or one of his many other epithets in his other myths. Thus his name doesn't necessarily change between these two phases. Rudra is like Odin in that way, having his primary name and many epithets and forms. But the Greek tradition is more like the Welsh in this way. The primordial Greek Rudra is Cronus, who divides earth and sky during a marital rape and is castrated and goes to rule the highest otherworld realm and then must remanifest in order for there to be a Greek Rudra of the world deity, this being Apollo. The connection between Cronus and Apollo is then unspoken and esoteric within Greek tradition, like that between Ephnician and Gwyn in the Welsh tradition. But comparative analysis can demonstrate, beyond doubt, the through line connecting these pairs. When we align their myths, it is plain to see Ephnician is to Gwyn, as Ever Finn is to Finn, or as primordial Odin is to Odin in his other myths. Thus, Ephnician and Gwyn are continuations of the same deity. Stella Cromrish explains that in the Vedic myth, it is Rudra Agni who has actually set the events in motion by preparing the fire seed and placing it in Father Sky inflaming his passions and leading to his violent sexual act against his female other half. Thus, Rudra Agni sets the catastrophe in motion by the nature of his fire aspect, and then tries in vain to stop the rape and the expenditure of sacred liquid into the world, the generation of offspring. This explains Ephnician's actions thoroughly. He first is against the marriage and so mutilates the horses of Matholach, which also in inflames tensions between the parties. Manawidan, the fire god, is present when Branwen marries Matholach and leads the envoy sent to Matholach to arrange to give him the cauldron as recompense for the offense of Ephnician. Finally, near the end of the war, Ephnician says, Alas, woe is me that I should have been the cause of bringing the men of the island of the mighty into so great a strait. Evil betide me if I find not a deliverance therefrom. To give them deliverance, he self-sacrifices and breaks the cauldron of regeneration. And as I have said, this self-sacrifice, in which his own heart is burst, must esoterically 
form the bridge back to the wholeness of the divine pre-cosmic state that he had been seeking. As when Cronus becomes ruler of the Blessed Isles at the same point, or when Rudra, the transcendent pillar in the waters, castrates himself and then goes off to his own sacred mountain, reunified with his higher absolute essence. Clearly, with this act, Ephnician allows his side to win the war against Mithalach, to destroy the cauldron of regeneration that would lead to a hellish zombie state lacking the cycle of natural death, the muteness of the revived warriors that go into the cauldron, symbolizing their being cut off from the essence of the divine, which is voice. Perhaps this short-lived primordial state of living death, separated from the divine, is similar again to when the Cyclopes and Hecatonchires are trapped in Tartarus by Uranus, and then freed by Cronus at the end of the war. So Ephnician and Manawidan, that is, Rudra Agni, together help to give Branwen two Matholach in marriage, inflame the tensions between the two sides by mutilating the horses of Matholach, and arrange to have the cauldron given to Matholach. They then fight to separate Matholach and Branwen, while Ephnician violently cleanses the house of Matholach as the defender of the house akin to Vashtospati, then casts Matholach's offspring into the fire, and finally realizing the fact that he has been the author of the whole sequence of events, like Rudra, self-sacrifices to destroy the cauldron of regeneration, bursting his own heart in an act that esoterically implies the overcoming of the passions and the return to the divine realm. The ancestors of humans are then discovered and populate the new world, as in the other creation myths. This is the Welsh creation myth, and as I have suggested, it is repeated in a very sketchy form in the Gaelic Book of Invasions, in the sequence known as the Invasion of the Sons of Mill. Aver Finn is the Rudraic god matching Ephnician. His brother Don, who sometimes appears as the singing severed head Don Bo, is the lord of the island that is the gateway to the underworld, thus matching Ephnician's brother Bran, who becomes a speaking severed head and the lord of the otherworld island of Gwales after the war. And thus the marriage of Eriu to Mac Grainia is the parallel of the marriage of Branwen to Matholoch, Mother Earth to Father Sky, divided by the Rudraic god and his brothers. They will seek long and fruitlessly who do not recognize the Celtic creation myth in these stories, for there is no other. The Celtic creation myth has, however, been left to us in remarkable detail, and in two versions no less. It is understandable that the Celtic creation myth has not been decoded until now, as it is somewhat complex work until one gets to know the underlying pattern. That being said, henceforth anyone who claims the Celts have no creation myth has simply admitted their ignorance of the subject. And not only is this the Celtic creation myth, but the numerous similarities between the Welsh and Vedic creation myths allow us to deduce that the Proto-Indo-European creation myth must not have been far different in its narrative and esoteric meaning, and that the places of agreement between the Welsh and Vedic versions give us a clearer and more detailed idea of what that Proto-Indo-European myth looked like. Rudra, that is, Ephnician, violently divides Sky from his other half, Earth, who are in an abusive progenitive union, and then he provides a paradigm for self-transcendence and the return to divine wholeness, rupturing the site of his own passions, and thereby forming a bridge to reconnect with the divine thereafter, while also instituting the cycle of natural death within the world when he breaks the cauldron of regeneration, and setting the newly instituted world in order by completing the division of earth and sky. The ancestors of humans then are found as a mysterious after-effect of this great event. Writing on the self-castration of Shiva when he is in the form of the pillar or sthanu, the scholar David Shulman describes a pattern that also exactly fits the actions of Ephnician. Quote, This is the essential Shaiva vision. One reaches the positive pole 
through negation. Sthanu is the pillar, rigid, removed from the world, chaste, intent on wholeness, uncompromising, yet supportive of the limited order, sexually potent, the inventor of death. The terrifying aspect of Sthanu also becomes defined as a kind of compassion or mercy, albeit the peculiar mercy of mortality. End quote. He concludes that, quote, the destroyer's uncompromising demand for perfection, his angry withdrawal and protest, and finally, his furious self-mutilation form the essential conditions for his work of creation, unquote. The myth of Aphnician and Rudra is in fact the mythic narrative of the god of the divine intellect, who is the shaper of the world. For both Plotinus and Plato identify Cronus as the intellectual principle, or nous, and Fion's own name comes from a root meaning to see, and thus has the meaning of seer or knower, while Rudra is traditionally identified with the power of consciousness or mind in some fashion. In Ephnician's myth, we see the complex demiurgic process that leads the perfection-seeking god of divine intellect to reshape the catastrophe of existence into something that can once again approach order as well as divinity. In part two of this series, I will trace the genealogy from Ever Finn back to his great-grandfather, Grjohan, who is the great source of all manifestation in Irish tradition, the Irish Absolute, known to the Vedics as Brahman. What we have covered thus far has only been the second half of the Celtic creation myth. We are now ready to go deeper, all the way to the beginning before the beginning. My book, Taliesin's Map, The Comparative Guide to Celtic Mythology, is available from Amazon. Link in the description. <laughs>